Alright hey guys and welcome back to the channel or welcome if you're new here. Now today's video is going to be a little bit different. So with the help of SpectraPure right here, we're going to go ahead and create a full saltwater mixing system to make fresh saltwater at home. So as you guys probably know, to have a saltwater aquarium, you obviously need special water. You can't just use tap water and put salt in it. Duh. You have to make what's called RODI water, which is water that has been stripped of absolutely everything. There's no heavy metals, chlorine, chlorine. It's pure, clean water. Then you go ahead and mix your salt into that, and then you can do water changes on your aquarium. Yes, science! Now, to make this saltwater mixing station happen, we need a few things. First of all, we have the sink back here. This is a sink in our garage that we've never used before. So it's super dirty, but water comes out of it, and that's all we need. Next thing I have right here is a 32 gallon Brute trash can. And I went ahead and put a dolly on the bottom so we can go ahead and wheel it around. You'll see that later. Ooh. Then we obviously need the Spectra Pure RODI system. So the specific system I'm talking about today is the CSPDI 180 MF. Now basically this is a reverse osmosis system. There it is right there that produces water with zero TDS, has a whole bunch of filters built into it, and it's advertised as low waste. Which is great because that means you have more water actually coming out as RODI water and less waste water going down the drain. Now before we actually set it up, we obviously have to go ahead and unbox the system. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And just like that, we have everything right here. So we have the TDS meter, all the hoses, the float valve. This thing right here is what you use to loosen up these cartridges to remove them. We have a valve right here, lots of instructions, and then some uh, hardness test strips. And then of course we have the unit right here with the pressure valve and all the cartridges already installed. Now the setup of this RODI unit really isn't that difficult, so I'm gonna quick walk you through the entire setup process. It's very easy. First things first, we take the black hose and we screw it in right here. The yellow drain line right here just gets plugged into here, and then the blue clean water hose just gets plugged in right here next to the DI cartridge on the clean water side. Next, we take the colorful wires and plug them right into the TDS monitor. And once they're correctly in place, this just Velcros right here. Then we use this tool to loosen up this DI cartridge, remove this DI cartridge, and then go ahead and just hand tighten this back on. Now we can move back outside where I got it all set up. So I put the system right down here under the sink, easy access to look at the pressure valve and easy access to look at the TDS meter. By the way, the TDS meter on this specific unit reads the water going into the filter, the water coming out of the filter, and the water between um, two of the filter cartridges. Now you always wanna make sure that this blue hose, the water coming out of this system is at zero. You don't want any traces of anything in there. If this little number right here goes above zero, it's time to change your filter cartridge, which is very simple to do. All you do is unscrew that, put a new cartridge in, screw it back on. Now pardon the dirty sink, I could clean it, but I didn't want to. This black right here is the tap water. Now this just screws onto your sink, very, very simple. You could screw it onto a garden hose, very easy. The yellow line is your wastewater. This will always go straight down the drain. You never wanna use that water. You could use it for stuff like watering plants, but that is your wastewater. And then this right here is your clean RODI water. Now to first set the system up, we're gonna turn on the sink and let it run into the drain of both the clean water and the dirty water to kind of flush out the system for one hour. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. As you can see, the system is activated. We can go ahead and turn this on if we wanted to. And we can go ahead and see that's the water coming in. So that's very dirty water, very high. Now, if we switch this over to line three, which is the water coming out of the system, it's zero. That's probably not very accurate because the water hasn't even gotten to this stage yet. However, once you're normal and once you're filtering for real, you always want that to stay at zero, like I mentioned. Now we're just gonna let this dirty water rinse out for about an hour, and then we'll come back and set up the system for real. While the dirty water is draining out, I'm gonna show you a little bit about this right here. So this is my water tank. I wrote how many gallons it is on the side. So we have 25 gallons, 20 gallons, 15 gallons, all the way down to five gallons so I know how much water is in here. And then this is that little dolly I have it on so we can roll the water. Longer than a few minutes later. So the hour is just about up and we're almost ready to put that little uh, DI cartridge back. But I wanna go ahead and show you something. So this red hose right here, that red hose is designed to create more wastewater and less clean water, but it's also designed to help them let the filters last longer. You can install this green hose by simply putting it in the spot where the red one is, and it will create less wastewater, but your cartridges will not last as long. And then if you wanted to, you could install a little shutoff valve or even a float valve if you wanted to. The float valve would basically just go in your mixing container and it would just automatically stop the RODI flow. I would love to install this, but I'm not quite sure how much water I want to go into the reservoir if I want five gallons or 10 gallons or what. So I'm not gonna install that right now. The last thing I wanna go over is the flush valve. So if we move this real quick, this is the flush valve back here. This mode means it's filtering water, but if we put it like this, that means it's cleaning out the system. 
So every time you make RODI water, you wanna run this flushing the system like this 30 seconds before you make the water as well as 30 seconds after you make the water just to keep the cartridges lasting longer. And that's pretty much it. All you really need to do is watch out on the TES meter and watch out the pressure valve. Once the pressure drops about 20%, it's time to check the sediment and the carbon filter. And then once you see one PPM coming out on this display on line three, which means coming out of the DI cartridge, it's time to change the DI cartridge. And then line two just checks it coming out of the RO membrane. So line two will be what comes out of the RO. Line three will be what comes out RODI, so your clean final water. And then line one is your tap water. Anyway, so the hour is up. We're gonna go ahead and turn this all the way off. Slip this under here, get this loose, then put this DI cartridge in here. Probably should dump out the water first. Then we can put that in there and screw this back on. Now I'm gonna turn it back on and let the system purge the air from the DI cartridge. And now we're in business. System is flushed. We have zero TDS coming out of the RODI system. We have one coming out of the RO system and we have 103 coming in. Anyway, zero is perfect, so now all we have to do is stick our blue clean water into our mixing container and let this fill up. Now for my water change schedule, I used to do 10 gallons every week, but I'm gonna try to switch that up to 15 gallons every other week. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it fill up to the 15 gallon mark, and then we'll go ahead and mix our salt water. Fill her up, please. So it's the next day, I got a haircut, and I moved the 15 gallons of RODI water right here by just dragging it across the floor to the tank. So this is my reef tank, I'm gonna go ahead and do a 15 gallon water change on it. We have the water right here, it's already pretty much the same temperature as the reef tank, so that's nice. I'm gonna go ahead and drop, drop it. a power head in, this will mix up the water. And then we obviously need to add the salt, so I'm gonna add seven and a half cups of salt into this bucket. Now we can plug that in, and it's gonna go ahead and mix up all the water. Now we just have to wait for the water to run clear. I might throw a heater in here just to make sure it's at the exact correct temperature. But for now, we just gotta go ahead and let this mix up. The ducks are doing amazing. They're over there swimming in their pool, but they keep knocking their food bowl over like every single day and it's so annoying. So I have a solution to that. And that's this guy right here. So basically we have four inch pipe right here, T right there, and then two 90 degree angles kind of angled up. And then we have a hopper up here with the screw on lid. So we put food down here and then both ducks can eat at the same time and as they eat, the food kind of automatically goes down. Then all we have to do is keep this big part full. This is the food they were eating right here. This is their new food. As they're getting older, the female duck is gonna start laying eggs. So we have to get her ready for that with a special diet. So this right here is like an all flock food. It's actually these pellets instead of granules, as you can see right there. And then we also have oyster shells. Now oyster shells will just go in a bowl just like how their food is now. And only the female duck will eat this. The guy won't because the female needs this to basically make the eggs. And right here is the new setup. So their water bowl will be right here and then their automatic feeder will be right here. And to fill up the food, all we have to do is go right here, unscrew the cap and put new food in there. Very simple. So I went ahead and filled up their water bowl. So I got this right here and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the food and we're just gonna start filling it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this right here. I'm just gonna take buckets of food and just dump it right down. As you can see, it just kind of falls down this funnel and then comes out down here. And that's just about it. So they got their oyster shells right there and then their food and water is right here. The ducks should be nice and happy now and good to go. All right, so the water is now mixed. It's clear, the salinity is right. The temperature is also right and matches the tank perfect. Now all we gotta do is drain some water and put new water in. Very simple process. A little longer than a few minutes later. And just like that, the tank is drained. Now all we have to do is put the pump in this bucket, which I've already done and start filling the tank right back up. One eternity later. That, the return pump's back on, the tank is full, everything's filling back up and we're good to go. That's a water change done in the reef tank. Very simple, very easy process. Now that is gonna be pretty much a wrap for today's video. My first impressions on the Spectra Pure unit is that it's very well made, it's high quality, and it does exactly what it needs to do. The water change went amazing, it went easy. This unit makes water really fast. 180 gallons per day is very fast for an RODI unit. And the saltwater tank is thriving. All the coral, fish, and the anemone, they're all doing amazing. So that is gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. Good, bye.